Ever call CQ and think that nobody's listening? Well, maybe your signal's actually making it to the other side of the world. And in this video, I'm going to prove that my signal is doing exactly that. Now, I'm using a very simple antenna, um, and I'm guessing that a lot of you guys are, are using simple antennas too. My antenna is a doublet. Now, if you don't know what a doublet is, it's, it's, a, it's a dipole. But instead of being fed with coax, it's been fed with something called balanced feeder, uh, specifically ladder line. And what this does is it allows the antenna to be used uh, multi-banded. Now, my doublet is 66 foot or 20 meters long in total. It's an, an inverted V, um, so it will give kind of omnidirectional patterns. Um, but if you're using um, a, a, a dipole or a ground mounted vertical, your results are going to be very, very similar to this. Now, what made me make this video was I was calling CQ for about half an hour last weekend and I thought that no one can hear me, but I'm not I'm not going to ruin the surprise just, just quite yet. Right, so before we actually, I'm going to show you that, I want to show you just something about predictions. So we're going to just look at the computer here and we're going to look at something called VOACAP. Now this is online uh, predictions. So what you can simply do is you can actually select your location, your TX location and your RX location, or you could simply just move these uh, location spots about. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it between Scotland. I'll just make sure that's there. Yep, close enough into Scotland. And what we'll do is we'll put this all the way down to New Zealand, down into the, the South Island, because I've spoke to Brian ZL3XDJ quite a few times on CW. So let, let's do that. Now, on the right hand side here, you could see our mode, so we could say SSB. I'm going to use uh, CW because we quite often have a, a CW QSO. I'm just going to keep it to 100 watts. And if we open up our antennas, you could see what all the antennas are. So I'm just looking at kind of, um, I'll change these as well, just make these all ground planes. So not good ground, just ground planes. And just change all these. So this is going to give a prediction based on, you know, a standard radio um, and, you know, basic antennas, right? So we'll just close that and the prediction should update. Now what we can do is we can look at the propagation charts. So if we click that, we've got long path and short path. So normally I, we would be working long path, which would be in the AM. Now you could see that on um, on 20 metres, there's a 50, it's saying that there's a 57% chance of a contact. That's at uh, 6 o'clock UTC. And then you can see that in the evening, 70 metres is given that. If we look at short path, which would be then for the, uh, in, in the evening, you, you can see that it changes somewhat. So this tool, and it, I find it there or thereabouts, but what I find is it, it's not just right, it is just a prediction. And even with using this, um, it's not giving you the full picture. So normally when I come onto the radio, um, I'll use something called the reverse beacon network. And, I'm just going to show a screenshot here. So this is a screenshot. So this is from, there you go, this is the 5th of September. So this was on, this was from Friday. Okay, so this was um, 1542 Friday. This is now Sunday. So this was Friday afternoon. And you can see my spots here on 20 meters. And you can see that I'm one spot to the States and multiple spots across to uh, 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 Europe. Now, what you can't see is because there's no spots, it clearly shows that I'm not getting spotted anywhere in Asia or anywhere in Oceania. And this is where things get very, very interesting. So Rolly, um, Z01BQD, he actually gave me the heads up on this. So when he's listening for us guys in the UK or us in Europe, he's listening to an SDR in Southern Australia in Adelaide, one run by VK5PH. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, this is, this is, this is the SDR here. So it's a Kiwi SDR um, and it's on a, it's, it's, it's got a 12 meter dual conal antenna. Now, if you don't know what that is, and it's a, it's a big cone antenna, but it's not a gain antenna. So when I was calling a uh, test or CQ at that time at nearly four o'clock in the afternoon, I was nearly five, actually British summertime, I could actually hear myself on that SDR. Now, I've done a number of tests. I've done tests in the afternoon and I've done tests in the morning. And that's what I want you guys to listen to. So I'm now calling CQ into my radio transmitting. But what you're actually going to hear is the SDR uh, uh, down in Adelaide. And I think the results are, are, are quite startling.
Now, you could see that I went through various power levels on uh, single uh, SS, sorry, CW, and you could see that that did make quite a bit of difference. Um, and you could see the one instance where on SSB I was running 300 watts, and that did make a difference. But comparing to the predictions and comparing to the uh, reverse beacon network, I wasn't being seen or it wasn't predicted or I wasn't being spotted at all, but yet on this SDR, I was really, really uh, loud, I would say, um, and these weren't perfect conditions. So my simple antenna, um, and if I can do this, then you can. You guys can do this with, with your antenna. I would encourage you to try CW. It, it's a mode. People think it's a lot of learning, but it's not. If you do a little bit each day, and I am no expert on CW, I can converse about 16, 17 words per minute, um, and, and that's as much as I can do. So if you take your 100 watts, on CW, you're squeezing that 100 watts into basically 100 hertz band bandwidth. If you take that same 100 watts and you put it into 2.3 or 3 kilohertz, you're spreading that out. And that's just why uh, SSB is just quite not as uh, effective as CW. But not only that, it, it can be very frustrating just calling to what you think is a dead band. But if you're able to actually see that you're actually being heard and hear yourself on the other on the other end that you know that gives you a lot of certainly gives me a lot of satisfaction and okay i've maybe not made a qso but i know that i'm actually uh, uh, making the journey so when i was actually calling cq in the afternoon it was three o'clock in the morning uh, in south, south australia so it's unlikely that many people are actually going to be up and about and the other time uh, the last weekend when i was calling cq i was s7 on ssb it was it was like five o'clock in the afternoon, so I think in Sunday afternoon, so I think a lot of the uh, the VKs were actually perhaps having their dinner. Now, putting this all together in practice, um, why don't you have a listen to this?
Right, there you go. There was two cracking uh, QSOs with Brian ZL3XDJ on 40 metres and 20 metres. And these QSOs happened minutes apart. Um, just amazing to see such a um, such a good signal from, from Brian. And, you know, wire antenna to wire antenna. So what's the moral of the story? So just don't always believe that the band is completely silent because... It, it, it simply isn't and and if you can give CW a go you know definitely go for that because that's going to make give you much more chances um, no towers no beams things like that all right guys I hope that was of, of some interest and I really hope that you'll let uh, you'll certainly give that a go I'll put links down in the description for what I've talked about here and if you've not subscribed then I would appreciate if you if you did all right guys bye for now